Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Monday, August 24th. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach, and I am joined by Mr. Andrew Hansen. How are you this evening, Mr. Hansen? I'm doing well, Coach. Probably not quite as well as you as the big Mavs fan after that incredible game, but we wow. did have a lot of fun watching it here. We did a family night to watch overtime. We all okay. sat down on the couch, and my kids now know Luca. They yes. were saying, Luca, awesome. Luca. Uh, everybody, you know, we were cheering for the Mavs because we know how big of a fan you are, uh, <laughs> and it was just tremendous. And uh, so now they know the one and only Luca. There you go. I you know, Like I put – on Twitter right after the game, I really do think he's going to be the face of the NBA, you know, for the next 10 or 15 years. I think he's, you know, he's doing things no one else has ever done. And uh, just, you know, incredible. It was a great game. It was an amazing finish. Uh, and just, it, it was an emotional roller coaster day, as you know, you know, today being, would have been Kobe's 42nd birthday and then the you know honoring him tomorrow uh, that everybody's doing on on 824 so that was you know just brought it back to you know memory of like this has really happened you know and it's it was tough and then uh what a great game that was i mean Porzingis getting scratched at the last minute really uh, you know, hurt us and, and probably about 60% of the other people out there with him, you know, being scratched after lock. But, um, you know, just being able to watch that game and, and you know, the fight being down 21. I, I can't remember uh, in the last four or five years enjoying a game more than that, man. It was it was great. I'm exhausted. I'm just, uh, you know, sweating games and, and, and watching teams. And then that one just took all the emotion you know, and then the Kobe tributes and, you know, there, there's some great ones out there. I don't know. Did you hear the one with Vin Scully where he talks about no. Kobe? Oh, it is. It's fantastic. Snoop Dogg has a good one that's posted as well. But uh, I'm a big Vin Scully fan. So hearing his voice talking about Kobe, it just. Oh, yeah. It, it pulls at the heartstrings. But I'll tell you, man, I it was a great day. It, it was fun. I, the NBA playoffs have been fantastic. And, uh, you know, we're just getting started. This is the first round. Oh, it's hard to believe. Yeah, it feels like we've been in it for a while now because they've done such a great job with the bubble. These games have been terrific. Uh, this is this is really an exciting time. It is. I, I just love it, man. Well, we're going to dive in. Uh, we want to get this posted so we give everybody a chance. You know, like the hamster on the wheel. It's like watch the games, sweat the games, follow them, jump on podcasts, you know, posting lineups again and it just <laughs> we don't know what day it is half the time it's hilarious but yep. uh man you you can't ask for anything more i you know they said it on the tnt after the games today you know watching that you know the different games throughout the day the early games and then luca goes in there and they all threw water on him and went nuts it's similar to watching the ncaa tournament that's what this keep remind you know reminding me of um mm -hmm the same feel to it uh but right fantastic stuff man well awesome let's get rolling here our i want to thank our presenting sponsors mybookie.ag it is the place to go for all of your sports wagering and casino action go to mybookie.ag or dfscoachtalk.com use the promo code coach talk all one word no space and you get a hundred percent of your first deposit all the way up to a thousand dollars and a free twenty five dollar uh, free play just for being a Coach Talk listener, but you have to use the promo code Coach Talk. Same promo code for our friends at TVG.com, which is the place to go for horse racing. If they have a $300 risk free bet, so you put your deposit in. If you lose, TVG uh, sends that back to you. So it's, it's a great offer. Uh, best thing to do to sign up for that is go to our website, DFSCoachTalk.com and click on the banner that says TVG, risk-free bet. All right, we are going to dive right into this slate as usual, and it's not Groundhog Day. It's a four-game slate, and we have them playing throughout the day, so you got to love it. Uh, 
we are going to pull up mybookie.ag. We got the lines up already. They're doing much better job getting those up earlier now. And we have all kinds of things to discuss here, Andrew. How about I shuffle through a handful of player news and then we'll jump in? Please do. First guy on the list here is KCP. He is listed as probable. And guess what? Anthony Davis is on the list. Okay. Anthony Davis and LeBron both listed as probable. Uh, Andre Iguodala, questionable new injury for the Heat, as is Derek Jones Jr. and Jay Crowder. So you've got three guys that play a similar position. That knocks the, the heck out of that depth from that spot for Miami. So something to keep an eye on there. Uh, for sure, they're all questionable. None of them are ruled out as of yet. Uh, Rondo, who they were talking about maybe coming back, um, he is doubtful now. He had gotten clearance to play with a wrist, but then he tweaked his back. So he is probably not going to suit up. Uh, Russell Westbrook, the big news, still remains out. And then uh, Michael Carter-Williams out. And one guy we're going to have to follow like we have the last couple of games Aaron Gordon is questionable with that hamstring, and that makes a big domino effect for that Orlando team. So that is it, sir, and we're going to move to game one. It, it is that 1.30 p.m. game, and it is the Milwaukee Bucks looking to complete the sweep of the Orlando Magic. Orlando is a 13-and-a-half-point dog, and that's the biggest line that I think we've had so far in the playoffs. And uh, the over-under in that game is the highest on the board, 225 and a half. So very interesting. Very seldom do you see an Orlando game as the highest over-under, but that's what we've got here. So let's hear some of this Andrew Hansen knowledge. And let me give you a, a big shout-out for having your kids become Luca fans this early. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. awesome, man. It's good stuff. It's awesome. Uh. Summer is here and sports are finally back, which can only mean one thing. It's time to get back, relax, and make some cash. Everyone has to start somewhere, which is why you want to get off on the right foot by choosing an established book like mybookie.ag. With all the major sports seasons just around the corner, there's never been a better time to get in on the action. Dynamic betting lines and a simple-to-use platform make the process easier than it's ever been. Create your account in just a few easy steps. Deposit and begin placing your bets. Sign up now using promo code COACHTALK to get your deposit matched 100% all the way up to $1,000. Plus an extra $25 free play. That's promo code COACHTALK. Use it to score yourself an extra piece of the pie. With my bookie, you bet, you win, and most importantly, when you win, you get paid. So yeah, you're you're definitely still thinking about today. Today was sweep uh, Sunday with uh, Toronto and Boston, right? Uh, Milwaukee. Remember they lost that first one to Orlando, so two to one. Oh, I'm so, sorry, you're right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, yeah. My, Miami's going for the sweep um, right. later on, but yeah, so Milwaukee. Two to one, um, and Aaron Gordon is really the huge domino, like you said, because um, we've looked at Ennis and Clark a lot as the value plays, and now he's. it seems like he's inching towards playing, right, with the actual questionable tag. So we'll just have to wait and see. Great, great that it's yeah. the first game. Uh, if he's out again, I will consider Ennis and Clark. Again, the problem is that they're getting priced up, and a couple day, days ago we talked about the build on DraftKings and how you could get two studs in there pretty easily with got with these value plays like Ennis and Clark, but that's when they were down in the three K range. Right now they're both over four thousand on DraftKings, so it's a lot harder to get two studs, and they have really priced up all the studs. I mean, Harden, Harden's eleven seven, Lillard is ten yeah. nine, LeBron ten eight. It is. It's really challenging pricing on this slate. So, and it's on both. I mean, yep. on on Fanduel, you've got Giannis at eleven five, Harden eleven three, Davis ten nine, LeBron ten five. So they're not pulling any punches. No, not no riding chalk. No. This is like 
game four of the playoffs, it's like the the sites are into it too. Like they're yeah. stepping up their games and they you they're making build. us step up yeah. our games. You got to build with with uh, not just mid range guys. You got to find you know super value guys. That's right. that's the key. And everybody right. is attaching to these value guys. Like how many people have continuing, including us, have had Royce O'Neal in their lineup constantly. Yep. I mean, I'm not a Royce O'Neal fan, but it's it's almost impossible to make it work unless you find those guys that are cheap that are going to play minutes, and then you just cross your fingers. So, right. yeah, it's it's it like I agree with you. I think it, for un, it's unusual, but both FanDuel and DraftKings both tightened the belt uh, on us, no doubt. Yes, they did. So uh, that'll be huge if we can get. Ennis and Clark with a similar situation. And, of course, Ennis got ejected last game. So you got to figure he'll be rested. He only played like yeah. nine or ten minutes and yeah. motivated. So I, I do still like him as a value play. Uh, Augustine was great. He was in our player pool. He played awesome. But even he's up to 4.6. So it's just harder and harder to yeah. get even a value play from Orlando. Um, with Milwaukee, uh you know, Middleton, I, I want to play him when he breaks out. He went 7 for 17 last game, but he's still at 7.9. And mm-hmm. I I prefer Butler in that price range at 8.1. I think I even prefer T.J. Warren at 7.8, you know, right around there. So unless you talk me into Middleton, I, I may have to wait, but I, I am anxious to play him. Um, I mean, he can't just be Giannis for 65 fantasy points every game, can it? You know, it's it. He did toy with him. I mean, he could add 120 fantasy points <laughs> if he wanted to. Yeah, it was crazy. But you know, I I'm with you. I I thought Middleton's price would drop a little bit more because he's had several just you know subpar games in a row. Yeah, he really has. How about Paul George's shooting though? Holy Toledo! Wow, you talk about a guy in a slump. He's shooting in the teens recently. It's nuts. But anyway, I regress. Go back. So we're breaking this game. Go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, again, I might just end up fading Milwaukee. Uh, multiple lineups, I'll get at least one share of Giannis. Uh, Bledsoe at 5.9, I think you could use as a pivot to a guy like Schroeder um, or Dragic. You know, he's cheaper than, than Goran Dragic, but. You know, he's he's not getting that many minutes. He doesn't need to get that many minutes. Um, so there's a real good chance, again, that I will basically fade Milwaukee. Yeah, you know, I'm with you. I, I mean, we called the blowout the last game, and we did fade most of the guys. And other than Giannis, who somehow made, you know, close to value or value slightly anyway, uh, just is amazing. But, I, you know, I don't – in my mind, this, I don't even think this series is a series. It's two to one, like you said, and I'm thinking it's blowout and over. But I, right. I don't see how Orlando wins another game in this series, to be honest with you. Yeah, but, I don't either. And Vegas is feeling that too with this big spread. Um, and if it does blow out, you know, could Giannis replicate the exact game that he did the last game? There's no question about it. But if you want to pay eleven five for him on Fanduel, uh, you know. Then, you know, you, you're you're taking a risk. Uh, he's 11 one on uh, on DraftKings as well. So, you know, you can never go wrong taking him. But it with salaries being so tough, I just think Milwaukee handles this game pretty easily. Um, and you know, I don't want to roster any of their guys, and I don't think the value guys. Uh, again, with the depth that they have there, it's not like you can say, okay, if this blows out, this guy's going to get regular run and then extra run, uh, you know, because they rotate guys. I mean, you can say that maybe about a DiVincenzo or Connaughton or someone of that nature, but again, that's a risk. So, you know, I just don't feel like I need to go there. On the Orlando side, uh, you know, Vuk is expensive. He's 9-1 on uh, – DraftKings and Vuk is nine or only eight two on FanDuel. They certainly can consider him there. I mean, if they're going to stay in this game whatsoever, 
it's going to be with Vuk having a big game. And he's been tough. So, you know, he'll still be in my player pool for building this lineup. Uh, but, again, if it blows out, I don't think they blow him out in the in the second half because they'll be down three games to one. It's not like it's the closeout game where we played some extra Philly guys today because we knew they'd play till the end. Um, so, really, uh, I don't expect – in my opinion, Gordon, a role. And if he does, he's got to be limited. He hasn't played in a long time. And if it's a hamstring, they're not going to just throw him in there for 35 minutes. So, uh, you know, I'm going to keep an eye on the news. If Gordon does play, even if it's in a limited role, I will not play Vuk. If Gordon does sit like I'm anticipating, I think Vuk is is big time in play. But really, that's it for me in this game. Very uh, limited. Excellent. All right, let's go to game two. It is the uh, 4 p.m. game. The Houston Rockets at the Oklahoma City Thunder. This is a really good series, hard-fought series, and we've got Houston favored by three and a half. Uh, the over-under in this game is only 219 and a half, which I thought was shocking. A Houston Rockets game under 220, something doesn't make sense there. And when Vegas sets the line like that, it's a head scratcher. What that tells me is the Thunder are going to be in this game and it's going to stay tight. That's, you know, what the the odds makers are looking at. So I think you got to take that into consideration. You know, you certainly have the same aspect of, you know, is Harden plug and play with Westbrook out? And I guess that's the most important question maybe on the whole slate. You know, in general, I would say yes, but now that he's priced up even more, 11.7 on DraftKings is just a monstrous price. That is and, good. you know, he played he played well last game with 38 real points, 27 shots, but even then he didn't quite hit value. So you can play him. I, I'll play him some, but he, he, I don't think he's going to be in my primary build. I think I'm just going to go to some ancillary parts again. The problem is now Eric Gordon is priced up to 6000 on DraftKings. Uh, they're killing us. We're going to oh, have to put us. all subs. Our whole lineup is going to be subs. <laughs> Good Lord. I, I want to go back to Gordon. He took 24 shots. Oh, I, I know. Mean, he's really the 1B right now in terms of handling the ball. You know, when, when Harden fouled out in overtime, it was Gordon running the show. You know, he Almost didn't have... all the usage Westbrook had went to Gordon. Yep. I mean, it's incredible. Usually it spreads out a little bit, but it almost all went to Gordon. Yep. So I, I'd like to get him in there. I, I'd like to get House in there again. He's he's more reasonably priced at only five thousand, um, and it that worked last time. Remember last slate we had a FanDuel GPP that had Gordon and House, and then on the OKC side it had. The three guards, Shea, Schroeder, Paul, and Adams, and it cashed right. easily. And so, yeah. um, again, if the game stays close, that build could work. You know, it, it has gotten a little bit more expensive. I don't know if I'm going to want to go back to the exact same build, but I still do like Gordon House. I certainly like Jeff Green. I think I'm going to continue to fade Covington. On Yeah, I don't. I, I still haven't figured that whole deal out unless it's yeah. just Green is just overtaking those prime minutes. Yeah, Green has really stepped up, and Covington has to deal with Adams while he's out there. Um, on the OKC side, all those guards are still in play for me. I also want to mention a guy that's climbing the leaderboard on the rankings for a value play for me on this slate, and it's Mr. Dort. And here's the thing with him. If you watch the last game, Houston was daring him to shoot threes. You know, they just said, if you're going to beat us, Fine. And he did not beat them. He went 0 for 6 on three-pointers. For yeah. the season, he's only shooting 28% on threes. Yeah. But here's the thing. He only cost 4000 on DraftKings. He's only 35 on FanDuel, so he's minimum price. Wow. And even though he went 0 for 6 on three-pointers in that game, he got 25 and a half fantasy points. So he paid off value. Yeah. He got you more than 6x shooting 0 for 6 on threes. And that's just because he's out there for big minutes. Yep. You know, he was defending Harden a lot, so he's he's getting rebounds. He's doing little things, steal, block, 
maybe an assist or two. Um, so there's, you know, a new guy here to me that makes sense to play as a value play to help us get a stud or two. So I'm going to have some exposure to him. It sounds like secret squirrel material right there. Let's do it. I think so. You know, I, I'm with you on Dort. I, he's not an offensive player per se. I think he'll get better as time goes. He's certainly a defensive specialist, hustles his tail off. You know, he's sort of in that initial Draymond Green kind of build of a, of a guy, like, you know, just a really good defender, a little, uh, you know, challenged offensively. I mean, Draymond got much better as he went on, and I think Dort will too, but you know, I, he's not going to certainly break the slate by any stretch, but in a in a situation where we're trying to find salary relief, and, you know, to me, sometimes you have to look at that minutes equal money scenario because he's going to probably get 30-plus minutes, he's going to start, and he's priced very cheap. So that puts him in play for me as well, uh, you know, just strictly because of the salary relief. Um, I'm with you on Harden, you know, when, when a guy has to score in the sixties in fantasy points, just to make value, uh, it, it's difficult. And, you know, the problem is though, you know, you may need those 62, 65, whatever it is points to cash. So, you know, it, it's a really two edged sword here with Harden, uh, as of right now, you know, and normally I'm a, a one build guy or. I'll make a few lineups just with a couple of uh, different pivots, but I'm probably going to split my action between two different lineups in cash tomorrow, which is unusual for me. And I'm going to have one with a build with Harden and one without. Uh, and, you know, I'll get a little bit more into that as we go through some of these games. But I just think, you know, there's definitely two sides that both make sense in this scenario. And I, I want to at least be live with whatever side of that ends up being the right side to be on. Um, I'm with you on Jeff Green, another value play that seems to have taken over uh, Covington's Thunder. But, you know, it just it bothers me. You know, my I, I go nuts whenever I feel like two guys are sharing a position. It just it eliminates them in my brain. So I know I'm saying Green's a nice, you know, uh, value but I when push comes to shove I'll probably fade both green and coming because I think they're going to split minutes there I really do um you know Gordon I, mean, I I've been on this Gordon bandwagon for a long time and he really hasn't shot the ball as well as he can right so if if he starts you know and he's a streak shooter so if he's taking 20 shots or 24 shots a game like he has in the last two and he gets hot, you got to have him. Now, he is a guy that could break the slate. Yep. Uh, his price has come up, but not to the point where you can't roster him. So, you know, he's going to be one of my favorite plays again. It's almost like ever since our member Brenton, uh, you know, talked smack about him, he's just been, you know, firing <laughs> it up. <laughs> this is the third show in a row I hit. Bre Brenton's going to be mad at me now. I'm going to pick <laughs> on him. But, uh so anyway, I, that's that's what I think of the Rocket side. That that's my exposure there. Um, I'll tell you what though, on the Thunder side, here's a guy that I have not played. I don't know if I've played him in the bubble, let alone the playoffs. Is I think Shea Gilgus Alexander is now feeling a little more comfortable. He had sort of a breakout game. He's in the flow of things. They're getting him some shots. Um, and he's a key guy to this team doing well. And I noticed one other thing that when Dort was out and not playing that much because of the injury, uh, it affected Shea's effectiveness on offense because Dort is one of those guys like Draymond Green that makes shots for guys just like he does with Clay and Steph. I, I watched Dort on the floor on offense, he's setting screens. He's pinning people down. He's, you know, reversing the ball. He doesn't really look for his shot unless he's wide open. And he's creating those better opportunities. And I think the biggest recipient of that is Shea. So, you know, just watching the flow of that offense in the bubble, you know, when Dort was out to when he was in, I think that opens his game up a little bit. So for the first time, I, I may go to the Shea uh, bucket. I think he's 
playing at a good level, and I think he'll stay very low owned. Um, and then we have to talk a little bit about Steven Adams, and I want to get your input on that. But specifically on FanDuel, where the, the center position is extremely thin, uh, it almost forces you just out of the possibility of a good result from that position uh, to utilize Adams again with the centerless uh, Rockets. So, uh, you know, I can see myself very easily rostering Adams on FanDuel and fading him on DraftKings. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I agree. The center position on FanDuel is a bit of a mess. You know, in that price range, you've got Adams, Brooke Lopez, and Whiteside. And, you know, from a GPP perspective, I usually don't get too excited about Brooke Lopez. Whiteside has some appeal because it looks like he's going to start again. And we know he can pile up four or five blocks as quickly as anyone. So, you know, he is a little bit tempting in that price range, but Adams to me is like the only other choice. And otherwise you got to go pay up for Vucevic. And I don't, I don't really want to do that. Um, yeah. So you got to consider him, um, you know, just looking at his note again here, he played pretty big minutes, but he has, he does have the questionable tag. This is Steven Adams with a bruised right knee. Yeah. And, you know, if he's limited, Physically, that's going to really be an issue dealing with the up and down pace uh, that Houston plays. So I I probably will have some exposure to Adams on FanDuel, um, but I am also looking at Whiteside, and we'll get to him in that last game. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not excited about the Adams play, that's for sure. But, you know, I think you got to just at least consider him in the matchup. Uh, right you know, for for no other reason than his salary is not bad and it's a, it's a thin position. So I'm with you. All right, game three, Indiana Pacers, Miami Heat. We've got that at 6:30. Right now, the Miami Heat are six and a half point favorites. The over under, the lowest on the board at 216 and a half. That's sort of been the mantra for the uh, these two teams throughout this small playoff run. How do you see this game unfolding? Well, you know, it's last chance for Indiana to keep it going. Uh, you got to think they're going to take the approach that we talked about with Philly today, playing those starters big minutes. I mean, Brogdon was just phenomenal. Wow. Um, you know, TJ McConnell only played like four minutes. You know, they just let Brogdon go as far as he could, and he put up yeah. monster numbers. You talk about breaking the slate. That guy was tremendous last game. Yeah. And now he's priced up to 7.5 on DraftKings. Uh, but he's definitely going to be in the player pool for me. You know, TJ Warren is, you know, he's getting better. He continues to pile up the steals. Um, like, as, as I mentioned earlier, I like him better than Middleton um, in this price range, but probably not quite as much as Jimmy Butler on the other side. So for me, it might only be Brogdon for Indiana. And then with Miami, it's Butler number one again for me. Uh, you know, we, we talked about his intensity with this matchup. And then in this last game, you know, he went 17 for 20 at the free throw line, which That's incredible. it tells you all you need to know about a guy's aggressiveness and how motivated yeah. he is. So he's number one over there for me. Um, and then, you know, Dragic and Hero, you can still look at. I probably won't get to them quite as much this time around. Just because, uh, you know, the pricing, the matchup, the pace, uh, all things considered, uh, it's mostly just going to be Brogdon and Butler for me here. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, the, the guy that surprised me, I, I knew Brogdon, I had no, no doubt he was going to blow up in some of these games, some of these games. But Miles Turner, what a game he had, man. I did not see that one coming, but... Uh, that was a real surprise. I, I'm not a Turner guy, but, you know, again, at that position and the way he played, he certainly deserves considered. Um, Bam's not played the best basketball of recent, uh, but, you know, again, he's competing. He's in there in, in good minutes, uh, and you got to look at him. T.J. Warren, because he's being guarded by Butler, pretty much just eliminates him for me. I mean, he's still expensive. And Butler's just such a damn lockdown defender. It's not even funny. Um, 
You know, I think I, I like your take on Brogdon again. I don't think it's points chasing. I think, you know, they're going to let him play. And, you know, when he gets big minutes, he always, you know, uh, follows through and plays great. It's just that, uh, you know, they they like to play Aaron Holiday a point. They like to bring McConnell in. And they seem to just give him a lot of rest usually. And that just kills you as a DFS play. But if they're going to continue to roll him out there the way they did minutes-wise this last game, I think he's a fine play even though his price is up. Um you know, other than that, from the Miami side, I, you know, I know it's a broken record, but none is out of the picture pretty much. And uh, Hero's getting big minutes, playing at the end of games. He doesn't miss free throws. He hits big shots. You know, his price is still reasonable enough for me. I just, I think he works at that price. And uh, I still like to, to put him in there. I think Dragic is playable as well. But for me, I just think Hero with this 30 to low 30s minutes uh, is just a guy that's just going to keep producing. And I don't think the Pacers really have a, a good answer for him uh, defensively, uh, without question. Oladipo's uh, playing hard, but he's not the same Oladipo that we're used to seeing. And he's usually a shutdown defender, but he's just, you know, you can tell he's not 100%. And he's just, you know, playing as hard as he can. But, uh, you know, there's, you know, I don't love this game, not just because it's the lowest total, but, you know, I think that uh, the question is, you know, are the Heat going to handle this uh, and take control of the game? And then, you know, we're going to see Indiana just, you know, sort of fade out. uh, Or is Indiana going to play their guys big minutes and create some type of a, uh, a pushback here? If they do, I think, you can definitely go one off or maybe two guys in this game uh, max, but I think it, you know, if you stack it, I think you're you're asking for a little trouble there because you're not going to have as many DFS points available. Agreed. All right, last game on the slate, 9 p.m. late night sweat game. Of course, it is the Los Angeles Lakers and the Portland Trailblazers, and it is pretty darn ironic. The Lakers are an eight-point favorite, Kobe's number. Eight-point favorite on Kobe Day, 824. I don't see how, you know, the emotion in that lockers locker room for the Lakers talking about Kobe, you know, LeBron, how close he was to Kobe. I'm rolling LeBron out. I'm, I'm a narrative guy all day long, and I know he's coming off a great game and played a lot of minutes. I'm rolling him out there, and – you know what? On the other side, I think Dame feels that too. He's a heart guy, heart on the sleeve. He loved uh, Kobe as well. Uh, I'm not afraid to play either one of those guys. Those would be my two favorite spend up guys uh, against each other. Um, you know, you got to think Davis is going to have a good game again. I wish I could roster everybody from this team, but I just want to start it off by, you know, really putting that narrative in there that I think is going to have an effect on this game. And, uh, you know, I think it's real. I agree. I love the narratives. Those are my two favorite narratives uh, and guys to pay up for as well, Uh, especially on FanDuel with Lillard because he's much, much cheaper over there. Yeah. Uh, So on FanDuel, I want to play LeBron and Lillard. On DraftKings, I am planning to have LeBron out there. Don't know if I can pay for Lillard, um, especially if I'm going to get guys like Butler and Brogdon in there. So, you know, at, at a different price range, really, it's kind of a different different animal. But um, All right. but yeah, uh, those guys are going to bring it. I, I do expect that. Uh, we mentioned Whiteside with the start. I think he's a, a nice uh, a nice price, and you know, compared to Nurkic. Uh, I just think it makes more sense. You know what I think the problem with Nurkic is? I think he's tired. He's yeah. expelled, expended so much energy. People forget he came back from a devastating leg injury and was playing lights out, but I think he's running out of gas. I really do. And I yeah. think that's that I would really be aware of him, uh, you know, in this matchup. And that's why I think the Lakers are going to hand it to him. Yeah, I mean, he gave a lot just to get 
Portland to the playoffs. Big time. I mean, yeah. he he gave everything he had. He played oh, he tremendous was, he ball. He was the one A to Dame to get yep. them there. There's yeah, no he, doubt. Yep. Uh, but yeah, you could see it down the stretch in the last game. He didn't have a chance against Out AD. Against. Yeah. yeah. So he didn't even um, run back on defense a couple times. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I don't. I'm not saying that. You know, I don't expect it because the guy coming back like that, that's a lot to ask. Right. So uh, in terms of any other value plays, not much jumping out of, off the page here for me. Uh, it looks like Rondo will not play again, as you mentioned. So you could go back to Caruso. He's a nice price and he got 26 minutes last game. Uh, but for me, it's it's mostly LeBron and uh, maybe a little white side and, and, and probably some Lillard on FanDuel. Yeah, and, you know, depending on the builds and trying to get, you know, some mid-price guys in there so it's not a complete Stars and Scrubs lineup, you know, I have no problem taking a quick look at, you know, Gary Trent again or or Carmelo. I think both of those guys, you know, Portland knows they have to to put it all out there for this game if they're going to have a chance. Um, so, you know, you you could see some extended minutes from their key players, but... You know, I, I don't. Dame's not human, for first of all, but I, you can sort of see the wear and tear on the rest of this team. I mean, they did approach the bubble with game one, saying, "Hey, this is an elimination game for us." So they did that eight times just to get to this game. Then they start off with that first one, uh, first game victory against the Lakers, and just, you know, I, I just think they've hit the wall, and you know, so that's the concern, but. On the other side of that coin, like like we said, I mean, it's all hands on deck. They're going to play those guys 35 minutes if they have to uh, to get it done. But I would, you know, be careful on this game of uh, spreading too wide. I don't. I'm not going to go with a lot of ancillary guys just in case the Lakers do, you know, put one on them, which is very possible. I don't. I don't think that. Uh, you know, a 15, 18 point victory by the Lakers would be a surprise to me. So if they're the betters out there, I'd play the Lakers minus the eight, uh, to be honest with you. But um, we'll see. You know, when you say that, Dame could decide he wants to drop another 60 burger on somebody and and then we've got a ball game. So, well, if, if I remember correctly, uh, after the tragedy, I believe it was Portland and the Lakers playing uh, that next game and Lillard was terrific. In the Staples Center, they ended up winning the game. Uh, the Lakers came out flat. Um, so that's why I, I agree with you on the narrative for Lillard. I think he's going to bring it again. But, but I think the Lakers will have better preparation this time, and they'll uh, channel that emotion with LeBron leading the way. Um, but we should mention that uh, we've got final lineups tomorrow before lock that we're giving out to our members. Yes. And uh, it's a big weekend for us here and beginning of the week for, for new members. So we'd love to have you join us. And we give out a full FanDuel lineup for a cash and then also for GPP. And we have a very detailed uh, coach's clipboard with core plays and pivots. Uh, so that is available for uh, all members. And we invite you to come in plenty of time before lock here at 1.30. And you can get in on the action on Monday uh, with a weekly, monthly, or annual membership. Absolutely. And and the coach's clipboard is uh, for DraftKings to utilize for that player pool and the core and also have been uh, providing fantasy draft lineups. And we had a really good weekend with fantasy drafts. So they've got some, you know, you can stack, you could actually play five centers in your lineup on fantasy draft because you get, you know, you can, <laughs> it's a different position type build. So it's a fun one as well. So join us with that. Uh, you know, follow us after this post, uh, you know, this key to watch this in the morning, follow us on Twitter or in our discord. Uh, as Andrew said, you know, you could join us at DFS coach talk on Twitter. Uh, we're at DFS coach talk. I'm at Joe Sarvati, J O E S A R V A D I. Andrew is at language Olympic Shane at D E T sports Shane. And Freddie is at Freddie mills seven. Um, also, uh, this the big announcement we made on the podcast uh, yesterday was the what we're doing to honor Kobe on 824 Kobe Day, 
which that's what today is, uh, we are going to have everybody that retweets uh, and likes our uh, post on Twitter will be entered in a drawing uh, 10 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. We're going to draw two free monthly members and two free weekly members, two being Gigi's number to honor her as well in the mix of this. So uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, give us a quick like and and follow on Twitter, uh, and we really appreciate that. And we'll we'll you know be able to give some of these Kobe Bryant memberships out uh, to some of our listeners. Also, um, you know definitely follow us on Instagram DFS underscore Coach Talk. And if you're watching this on YouTube right now, very important for us. Give us a quick thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe. And also click the little alarm button so you know when our pods post. So then you're up to date on everything. So that is it, sir. I mean, that it has been an incredible day. Uh, phenomenal Mavericks win in a in really dramatic fashion. And I think we'll look back on that Luka game, you know, like we did the Dane game last year when the, he knocked out the Thunder. And, you know, all the big shots throughout the years, this seems to be somewhat of a staple that we're going to see that highlight quite a bit. So uh, it was fun, but it's been a great, uh, great weekend for us at DFS Coach Talk. We're still rocking baseball big time. And then, you know, we were talking about it. We're three weeks away from the NFL, which is like, what? So, you know, we're really pumped. You know, that's when we'll be full throttle. All four of our sports that we provide uh, basketball, football, baseball, and golf will all be going at the same time. And remember, when you sign up for Coach Talk, you get everything, all access, everything we do, all sports, all lineups, all builds, all strategy, all included with your membership. So uh, that's very exciting. Also want to announce something brand new, Andrew, and we weren't planning on it, but I'm just going to throw it in the mix. Uh, we are going to be rolling out a special four-month membership, and we'll announce this after Kobe Day, but it's for September, October, November, and December. And we wanted to put that together. We're calling it our fall special. And there are a lot of guys out there and gals that just like playing NFL DFS. So we wanted to set something special up for them where they're getting a good break on that membership. And it's just for basically when football is but that doesn't mean you only get football you get everything that we have right and that's going to be 199 is is all that is going to be so we're going to splash that everywhere you heard it here first uh so if there's any of our listeners out there that we're thinking of joining but we're waiting for football uh that may be your way to go that could that's probably yeah. the best way to save the money that's right i mean it is it is late august and we're about to start football season it is hard to believe uh, that the transition is coming. But that is the key thing with our memberships. You get access to all the sports. So we'll have the FanDuel lineup, GPP, and cash for every football slate, primetime uh, showdown slate, main Sunday slate. Uh, so it's going to be tremendous. It really is. And it's it's apropos, but our charity of choice here at DFS Coach Talk is mombon3.org, M-A-M-B-A-O-N-T-H-R-E-E.org. It is a wonderful uh, charity set up by Vanessa, and it, it uh, benefits uh, the surviving families from that accident. So uh, join us for sure. Retweet our Mamba stuff so we can give some free things away. And, uh, you know, we're just excited. This this is fun times. Great stuff. It's, you know, uh, a good way to honor Kobe's just, you know, working hard, staying focused and and getting things done here. So that's what we're doing. We're going to keep keep on going. Uh, that is it, sir. Do you have anything else you want to add to the mix? Make sure to tune in again tomorrow. And thank you for joining us today. That's right. We'll just Groundhog Day it every day because it's basketball <laughs> around the clock, man. It's, yes, sir. It's, it's heaven for sure. All right. Well, thank you, Andrew. Great job. Appreciate uh, all of our DFS Coach Talk team. Had a great uh, team meeting today in our coach chat there with uh, Brett and uh, Layton and 
Andrew and Shane and myself and also uh, Bryce and Dawson. We've got the, the best team in the business. And, uh, you know, we're here to make sure our members are taken care of. And we'd love to have you join us. So thank you so much for listening in. Uh, and we're going to meet you here again, same time, same channel. And we will look to crush it in DFS. Great win, Mavs.